Hey everybody, this is Nolan from Unity Coffee. Today we're going to be talking about pallet development. Pallet development is super important for roasters, baristas, or home brewers in order to identify some of the tasting notes that can be found in specialty coffee. Uh, and it's also just supposed to be fun. So part of pallet development today is going to be drinking the El Triangulo coffee from Tolima, Colombia. I'm going to brew it on our Chemex, and once we have a hot cup of it, we're going to compare it alongside a smattering of different flavors that were procured by our marketing wizard, Megan. Uh, and we're just going to talk about tasting notes, where they come from, where they come from in the mind, where they come from in the tongue. So the first thing we got to do is brew ourselves a little bit of coffee. So we just brewed up some of our El Triangulo Micro Lot from Tolima, Colombia. And the tasting notes on this coffee are marzipan pastry, blackberry jam, and lime soda. I definitely get the pastry element right off the bat. I do feel like the sweetness in this cup lends itself to like a almond pasty marzipan kind of thing to it. And it is super juicy. I'm going to do a side by side with the almond pastry. The sweetness that's in that pastry is obviously not reflected 110% in this cup, but when we think about coffee, how it's grown and how it's processed. There's a lot of variables in there that can lead to the quality of cup that I'm enjoying right now. And I can tell that this coffee, when it was harvested, peak ripeness, bursting with sugars in that cherry, and that translated itself into the bean in a really lovely way. When we talk about like almond brittle as a tasting note, or like a toasted walnut kind of vibe, a lot of that comes through in this cup too, and I'm getting that off of the almond slivers on top of the pastry. They're really bouncing off of each other. I want to do a dunk, but I don't think that that's helpful for the video. I'm going to do one dunk, because I want to know. Yeah, that was really good. That was totally worth it, but now I have ruined this cup for the remainder of the tasting. And let's get another cup in here. Woo! Fresh cup of coffee after I did my dunk. Let's talk about the blackberry component of the tasting note that I'm getting here. Now, when we call a coffee juicy, it has a lot to do with not just the way that it hits our tongue, but the mouthfeel and the way that it coats the inside of our mouths and has like a really plump, juicy body to it. And that's what I get out of this coffee. When brewed collect correctly, it should have a very heavy, heavy mouthfeel, almost a little syrupy on the back of your throat. And when we say blackberry jam, we got nothing but the best here. All. Mm. This is like if you took this cup of coffee and reduced it on a low simmer for like 45 minutes. You get all of that punchiness of the blackberry and just so much body and such a juicy, juicy, complex flavor. Um, coffee being a fruit tends to have a lot of fruit forward notes, especially on that lighter roast profile. In this coffee in particular, I think the fruit notes that we're seeing are something in that blackberry realm with a little bit of strawberry in there as well. I'm going to see what the fresh one's all about. Much more acidity in a fresh blackberry. I think the jamification really smooths out that fruited note. And I get that in the cup too, I really do. I get that juicy bombshell, a little bit of acidity, but really, really high in body and a little bit lower in acidity is what I'm getting out of this cup. And uh, I think that's absolutely delicious. Um, I close my eyes a lot of the time when I'm cupping coffees at home or when I'm tasting coffees with friends or here at the roastery. And when I close my eyes and take a really sharp sip in and I kind of open up my nose as much as I can and the first things that pop into my mind are what I consider to be those preliminary tasting notes on a coffee. 
And BlackBerry is what came forward for me out of anything else. A super solid balance between acidity and sweetness. Um, something like a cherry might be much higher in acidity. Something like a peach might be much more sweet, a little more basic. But the blackberry walks this fine line of being really juicy without having too high of an acidity and a nice sweetness on the back end. And that's what I think I get out of this cup as well. Really, really juicy without uh, being overly acidic or citric on the, uh, on the nose or the palate. Uh, something else that we brought in today to put side by side with this coffee is a lovely little berry tart situation. We're working with blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, blackberries, and kiwi, and a little bit of a custard filling as well. So I'm just gonna bite into this, and then I'm gonna need a second to enjoy it before I can really say anything else to you guys. That pastry might be the all-encompassing of all the flavor notes that we're talking about. The juiciness of the berries with that acid cutting right through that cream filling, and then the toastiness of that shortcake pastry base. So good. It's like if you just stacked all of these components on top of each other and slammed them all down. That's what we find in this cup. And that's something really magical that coffee can do is um, even if a coffee is a little higher in acidity and feels really kind of fruit forward and citric, the body of the coffee can cut through a lot of that acidity, especially on the aftertaste, and leave you with more of a juicy, well-rounded cup. And that's something we look for a lot when we're sourcing coffees. We want every coffee to be as well-rounded as possible, and I think the El Triangulo definitely hits a lot of those notes. And the last thing that we're going to try is our lime soda. Woo! Uh, this is, I think, a flavor note that also speaks to some of the effervescence that you might get in coffee. Sounds a little far out to talk about, but I've drank coffees before that just bubble on my tongue. They just lift off in this really, really elegant way, and it makes me feel like I'm sipping on a soda, or a cold beer, or a seltzer water. So, uh, when we say lime soda as a tasting note for El Triangulo, we're speaking a little bit to that delicate aftertaste in the way that the coffee can really bubble off of your tongue. So I'm going to go side by side. Yeah. I feel like the sweetness of the soda is kind of back in that mouthfeel conversation as well how heavy this coffee feels on my jaw, on the back of my jaw, on the kind of back of my cheeks as well. All that heavy mouthfeel totally comes through in the lime soda as well. And that's because it's just sweet. I mean, I love, I love sweet sodas. My friends, this was so fun. Thank you for joining me for Palette Development Day with Unity Coffee. If you thought any of this was interesting to you or got you excited to try some more of our coffees, then I feel like I accomplished my mission. Uh, if you have questions for me about what the heck I just said, or you want to fight me on certain tasting notes, or feel like you don't quite understand how a fresh blackberry could show up in a cup of coffee, reach out to us on Instagram or by email. And if you want to try your own side-by-side -side comparison with lime soda at home, pick up a bag of our El Triangulo Microlot from Tolima, Colombia. Cheers and enjoy. Mm -hmm.